Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I've got some great news for Godot developers. Godot 4 is one step closer with today's release of Godot 4 Beta. So this is a feature complete version of Godot 4. It's going to be a little bit buggier. That's what the beta is all about. But otherwise, you're getting what you're going to get when Godot 4 ships. And we're just going to jump in and take a look at some of the great new features and functionality. Now, the big thing behind Godot 4 is definitely the new 3D renderer, the new Vulkan renderer going on. So that is what I'm going to demonstrate today. I'm going to go ahead. Um, a lot of this stuff you've probably seen before. One of the cool things that Godot has been doing is actually backporting a lot of these features to Godot 3.x. Uh, so you've seen some of this new functionality. So I'm not going to explain things too much. I'll probably do a follow-up tutorial at some point in the future. But I'm going to show you a simple 3D scene so you can see some of what the renderer is all about. In order to do so, I'm going to use the uh, Sponza level from Intel, the updated version of Sponza. Let's go ahead and drop one of these into the game world. And let's... Wait for it to show up over here. All right, there it is. And I'm just going to transform it about the origin. Now, you're going to find some bugs. For example, if I do a tab here, I can't edit. So little things like that. Uh, that is the kind of stuff that we need to identify in this beta. You're also going to probably see some floating squares during the rendering. It's just a nature of the beta beast. All right, so here is our updated Sponza. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and let's gussy the place up a bit. So we also got to add the curtains. So let's drop in Don't Forget the Curtains. And then once they are loaded in as well, by the way, this level, you can download it yourself. I'll show you where uh, with the link down below. If you want to go ahead and check out the graphical capabilities, this is a good level to do so. All right, so there we go. We have a level and we have some curtains in our level. Now, you may notice things are a little bit dark. So let's turn some lighting on. I'm just going to go ahead. We'll save our scene. Um, we'll save it over top of this one right here. Because this one I'm actually recording in the right aspect ratio. All right, there we go. So now let's open up our Sponza level, this guy right here. And you're going to notice there are a ton of lights pre-configured in the scenes, but they're not actually turned on. So I'm just going to come over here. We'll grab this light, for example, and we'll just turn the energy on to about one. All right, and we'll go back over here and we'll turn the one by the doorway on like so to one. You can also change the coloring of things a little bit over one. So there's a ton of other lights in the world. This one also has a sky light set up for you, which is actually going to screw with my demo a little bit because I want to show you a uh, natural sky lighting, but just bear with me on that one. All right. So we got some lighting going on right now. Go ahead and save our, uh, our scene. And here it is. So you can see our world with that lighting in effect. There is the, uh, the rendering artifact I was talking about earlier on. Not much you can do about that. Again, I think that is a beta aspect. So here we go. Our scene is already looking pretty good. And again, the fidelity is quite nice. Um, now let's let's make it a little bit better. Now, one of the big improvements here is on global illumination. That is the way that light bounces and then rebounces off of other things in the scenes. One of the things that was added to make this work nicer is real-time global illumination in the form of voxel global illumination so go ahead and create one of these here as well there is this binding box which basically defines the boundaries of the global illumination calculations this is basically a big voxel grid uh, for calculating global illumination what you want to do is basically encompass the areas that you want to calculate so in this case my uh my sponsor level obviously you want to leave these as small as you possibly can while still capturing as much area as possible. All right, so here we are in the level. Now we can bake for voxel GI. You're gonna see a little warning over here that there's no data attached. Well, that's because we need to go ahead and create one right here. We'll go ahead and create it now, and then we're gonna go bake it. You can set the uh, subdivision levels, by the way, this is basically the number of cubes in our voxel simulation. The higher that is, the better the results are going to be, but the worse um, the look is going to be. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. We're baking the, um, we're baking it right now. You're going to notice, it. there we go, boom. So we now have a more accurate light simulation going on with real-time voxel uh, movements. By the way, if you move a light around in the scene, it will update dynamically. So we now have nicer GI. So again, there's this warning over here that I have no data. So no data set. This is a disabled bake static object to enable, which I've done. So I don't know why that error is still there. Again, that's the kind of stuff you're going to see in beta, it happens sometimes, it doesn't happen other times, just the nature of the beast. All right, so we've got global illumination in here. Let's look at some of the other things that have been added because there has been a ton of graphical stuff added. Go into our environment over here. Now, one of the first things I like to do is switch out my tone mapping. This isn't new, uh, but it, everything ships with linear. You've got a number of different options. I think Filmic generally looks the best, sometimes Aces, if you want a bit of a darker look. I'm gonna switch over to Filmic and we're gonna start from there. Okay, so here we go. And now we've got all of these other uh, 
options over here. So we got uh, sign distance field global illumination. This is a way of calculating global illumination, the secondary bounces. And there you can see the results of that. Obviously, it's really uh, amplifying the scene. But if, I think if I turn skylight, no, it's still getting it pretty strong. Okay, so that is one option we have there. Uh, screen space ambient occlusion. This isn't new, but uh, SSR. I forget what that acronym stands for. But as you can see, we're getting better and better light fidelity as well. Um, screen space indirect lighting. So again, let's let's look at this guy right here. So look at some of the shadows around it, secondary bouncing from light sources. So boom. And actually, I think it's more pronounced if I have sign distance field global illumination off. There versus there. So you're going to get slightly different or slightly better lighting with each thing you turn on. Another area that we have here. So there is uh, our lighting in action. I'm actually going to turn this one off. I find it's a little bit... Um, overwhelming to what I want to do. But here you can see, obviously, uh, much nicer lighting options, much more effects going on. Another thing we've got going in this release now is volumetric fog. So I can go ahead, I can enable volumetric fog, and you're seeing it's kind of being fed off by these lights. Another thing that we've got is um, sky shaders. So I'm going to come up here. We're going to go, this is an area I always screw up because there's a setting missing that I always miss. We're going to create a sky. So there we go, see our, see our sky in the background, just went completely dark. Now, with our sky selected, we're going to create a new sky, like so. We'll edit that sky, do sky material type procedural sky, like that. Um, and then we can change, if we go into the procedural sky, you can change how the sky looks, how the ground works, uh, the curve controlling it, the amount of light that comes in. You also come in here, you can change the sun. And again, you can change the way that the sun is going to light the scene, the max angle, like so. And then we can change the overall lighting that we're getting the ambient light coming in from the sky. All right, so we got light coming in from the sky now from above us. Make sure that it's fully enabled. So our ambient light, so they're coming from the background, should come from the sky, like so. All right, and now another thing we've got going on in this particular release is volumetric fog, which I believe I did turn on. Yeah, so there it is, turned on. And there, volumetric fog on. All right, so you can change the density, so you can have a lot of fog or a little fog. You can also change have it uh, emit color. You can have it uh, have have it tint itself. Um, but what we can also do now is come over here, and we'll go to fog. There is no a fog volume for the localized fog effect. So go in here. You can see it's creating this this cube in the world. So as we move that cube around there is that localized fog that will interact with the lighting as it comes in through the world. So we've got tons of new graphical capabilities in this particular release. Um, again, a number of uh, global illumination solutions. Uh, you kind of mix and match play with however it wants to get the effect that you want for your game. Again, you can see those um, marching cubes across the scene. That is definitely a bug. Hopefully it's something that will be resolved pretty quickly. But as you can see, Godot 4 is shaping up to have quite a bit of nice graphical features and functionality. And I'm only kind of scratching the surface because there was other things added. Uh, there's now finally um, portals and occlusion, so you can break your levels up into different pieces so the renderer can handle uh, big levels easier. Um, just, again, there, there is a lot to this particular release. So now that we've done a bit of a hands-on demo, let's jump on over and take a look at the release notes, see what else was in this release. Now, I'm using a preview version of the release notes to try and get this video out in as timely a way as possible. So do be sure to check GodotEngine.org for the full final release notes in case anything has changed. This should be pretty similar to the final results. So what is new in Godot 4? Well, first off, there's a bunch of stuff in the core. Now, this isn't going to be really um, sexy. It's not really easy to demonstrate because it's the stuff that um, you build everything else upon. There's been a lot of refactoring done. If you're interested, the Godot's lead developer, Juan, has done a number of blog posts basically talking about architectural changes that were made on like the core of the engine itself. Uh, but now let's get into the visual and sexy stuff. A lot of it I demonstrated to you just a second ago, which is the new featuring for rendering in Godot 4. Uh, it now uses Vulkan by default. There's also uh, support for Direct3D 12 that was created by W4 Games that has been submitted to the Godot project will probably be merged in in the future. Uh, there's also an OpenGL compatibility uh, renderer for older or lower end devices that don't support Vulkan. Uh, in terms of new features of functionality. A lot of it, like I said earlier on, is around global illumination system. So the GI probe was replaced by Voxel GI node. We showed that in action. A real-time solution for uh, small and medium scale environments. Uh, Godot also comes with GI techniques that can be used with large open worlds, such as the sign distance field global illumination. We saw that one. Um, 
it works in real time. Uh, you learn a lot more about it here. It's kind of like a lightweight version of what Lumen is doing as well in, over in the uh, Unreal Engine side of things. Uh, on top of that, on higher end devices, you can turn on um, the screen space indirect lighting. We saw that in action. That's SSIL. Of course, there's going to be a bit of a performance hit attached to that. Uh, feature adds more details to existing GI techniques by using screen space sampling, similar to screen space ambient occlusion. Uh, last but not least, light map baking is now done using the GPU to speed up the process significantly. Um, to help produce uh, fidelity of your 3D scenes, they added volumetric fog. You've got the fog volume nodes. We saw those in actions as well. There are a number of other atmospheres, of, uh, atmospheres effects, such as sky shaders. These are things I mostly tried to demonstrate in the earlier part of this video. On top of that, a uh, new way to add dynamic effects is, is decals or decals, depending on where you live and how poorly you speak, uh, which rely on PBR materials that can be used for decorating your environment. Uh, we also have... Uh, new attributes, so GPU-based particles comes with support for attractors, collision, trails, sub-emitters, and manual emission. Uh, we got improvements to shaders, including uniform array structs, uh, fragment to light varyings, macros, and shader includes. Um, for photographer-type people, people that admired in real-world lighting units, you can actually turn on real physical lighting, things like aperture, shutter speed, ISO. Um, oh, no, those are the standard settings. On top of that, you got, uh, oh, what are... It's ISO something, something, something. So basically, you can work in real lighting units if you prefer to do so. Um, several new optimization techniques are also at your disposal, such as occlusion culling, automatic mesh LODs, uh, manual HLODs using visibility ranges. Uh, on top of that, we've got support for AMD's FSR uh, 1.0 with 2.1 in a future release. Um, Supports multiple windows running per application now, and 2D got a lot of improvements as well. We're going to see some in the tile mapping side in just a bit, uh, but the 2D canvas renderer supports, supports canvas groups now, also supports 2D directional lighting and shadows, 2D sign distance fields can be used for custom effects. Uh, more details are available in that blog post over there. On the uh, physics side of things, uh, they moved back to Godot's in-house 3D physics engine. Uh, they were using Bullet, uh, but... This gives them more flexibility implementing new features and fixing issues. Uh, they're basically trying to bring it up to par of a bullet feature-wise, improve the performance, and so on. They included new collision shapes, cylinder, and height map, as well as re-implementing soft body nodes. It also improved the user side of things, took an opportunity to carry a major reorg of physics nodes uh, to make the experience more user-friendly. Uh, uh, more advanced... So, allows us to introduce the new character body node to replace the old kinematic bodies, which provides a more advanced behavior in 2D and 3D, allowing you an advanced character control ready to use with new configurable properties, um, things like moving, sliding, and so on. Uh, we've got, yeah, there is, there's absolutely a ton in this feature. We've got, on the AI side of things, you've got navigation server there. Uh, that was backported to Godot 3.x, so you may already be familiar with that. We've got improvements on the animation side of things as well. Um, We've also got improvements to scripting, a lot of improvements to scripting. I'll probably do its own video there. Uh, so new benefits, first class functions, lambdas, new property syntax, the await and super keywords, and typed arrays. Uh, Built-in annotations make the language clearer, improve syntax for exported properties. Uh, to top it off, your scripts can now automatically generate documentation that can be um, studied with the uh, built-in help and inspector doc tool tips. Uh, it's faster, more stable, uh, so definitely a huge rewrite there. Uh, George, um, is it Marquez, uh, was, did a lot of work in that regard. He blogged the entire thing as he was doing it, so scripting definitely got improvements. So did uh, GD extensions. Uh, they Basically, it's, it's an easier way of extending the thing itself, plus it's going to make um, running and using and creating extensions a much better process. Um, the GUI process got improvements, better localization, right-to-left font support. Um, the text rendering was completely uh, redone, the new text server behind the scenes. Uh, localization tools are built in, better font support there. I got improvements on the audio side of things, the new audio server. You've got a real-time audio uh, functionality now, so you can actually generate sound inside of the Godot engine if you so wish to do so. I do believe that was ported back to Godot 3.5 as well. Um, Built-in polyphony support, um, yeah. And then on the multiplayer side of things, uh, a lot of improvements there as well. Um, importing and exporting, we had improvements there. Uh, definitely, it's faster. There is a new FBX importer in there. You can now import your GLTF files at runtime. So if you want to actually have your game extensible and have new models coming in, that is an option available there as well. Uh, there is also FBX. 
um, and GLTF export here that's not part of this, but I think that might be an older feature. Uh, and then we just got usability improvements across the board. I told you earlier on uh, improvements to the tile map and the tile sets functionality, a lot done there. I'll probably do a follow-up video on using tile maps in Godot 4. Definitely uh, much nicer to work with tile sets and tile maps. Uh, there is a new editor theme in place, a variety of editor improvements. And of course, there is the web platform as well. So you can actually run Godot in the web browser, by the way. There's also an Android version of Godot now as well. Uh, and then some details if you want to go ahead and grab it. Uh, there were also some other stuff going on in the background, such as the move to .NET 6. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be a Godot 4 thing or 4.1, but uh, that's definitely nice to see as well. Uh, tons and tons and tons in this particular release, and they probably forgot a bunch of stuff. And I could go into it in more detail. I know I yada 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 over quite a bit, but I don't want this to be a seven hour video because I think you probably want to go ahead, head on over to the download section and grab Godot 4 for yourself. Um, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later and goodbye.